karibuni sana kwa kuza podcast we are very excited to have you my name is Mavo thank you so much for the follows yani tuna appreciate mwakani mpya tumeanza and you guys have been amazing thank you for all the messages we are getting and we appreciate that you are being ministered to and blessed well as you tune in today our conversation is loading on account of uh, scripture alone yes that's what it is how to read your bible that's what you're looking at today now the question is you know how many of you read your bibles every day we read that we we sing that song in Sunday school right read your bible pray every day if you want to grow but just how how critical is reading your bible for you have you have you read like the past maybe 2 3 days many people do not find this as anything crucial as long as god is answering my prayers as long as god is doing some things that i want him to do well i'm okay don't tell me about the bible i read it on bible in bible study day maybe you choose the wednesday and then on sunday that is the truth about most most of us but the bible is the word of god and we must find ourselves loving and receiving the truth of scripture after all any deception that you fall for will be on account of your lack of knowledge of scripture that's just the truth and the bible says it you know the truth the truth sets you free that is the word of god and so you need to find yourself studying it and it with me today two gentlemen here just to help unravel the whole conversation kwa na Matt Elmo Reverend Matt Elmo in fact um and then i have the Sawa Saddam ya alikuwa alikuwa Nicola Saddam Lisa watu I see you we we umeniona huko kwa 18 yeah Saddam Saddam would you want to be a reverend one day I know you don't want to be revered no okay let me just revere this well people we need to have this conversation ya kusoma biblia what is it all about you know kusoma bible i think most people would probably want to to know okay fine i have a bible at home uh, my mom bought it for me or whatever i have it on my phone but how do i just read the bible you know but i think before we even get into the details of reading the bible let me just start uh, with this question individually <laughs> have you challenged yourself as a believer to read through the bible um at all ever i mean have you ever done that before yeah i've done it i've done it a couple times when was your first time the first time that you linked yourself on that? i was in um i think i was in first year in campus all right is when i did it the first time okay yeah all right like with the, what, what, what was that aia plan or yeah it was one of those read the bible in a year plan right. type things and okay. so I, right. I, i i did that i did it several years okay you know in a row. all right yeah. all right uh-huh. saddam have you challenged yourself just to read through read pros through, yeah no what i've done is i've read testament pros and then I'm, I stayed away with the other testament. Yeah, that one I've done several times. Ah, all right, like yeah. you did the old, yeah. then chill and then did the new. New testament. So, yeah. uh, at some point in your life you've definitely just desired to get your mind to know the whole story of the Bible. Yeah. All right, so yeah. that you have an, a, a rough idea. Mm. You know, and I think a Bible is like uh, reading through the Bible like for, you know, th- those plans is like looking at a map and getting the general feel. Yeah. of a certain uh, location mm. right so that you know if somebody mentions this and that it is there and you can understand on particular you know like looking at the map of Kenya then you go county by county mm. i think for me that is what i would call a bible study is going to in, in Kenya county by county mm. and an an in-depth bible study will probably be now mm. going into the cant- into the counties sub going county. to sub county by sub county mm, and it's, it's like you getting the details of it mm. anyways it is expedient it is important for us to do that i think the question is why is it critical for us to do that and probably um you know we need to probably answer the question number one, what what is so important about the bible mm. that we must find ourselves reading it two things uh i would say the bible is uh to us one it is a very profitable book to read okay it's very profitable because as we read um Second Timothy 3:16 it lists for us mm-hmm. the benefits or the profits we get we gain from reading the scriptures okay. and he, Paul says uh the scripture is breathed out by God it mm-hmm. is profitable for teaching mm-hmm. Uh, for reproof correction mm-hmm. and training in righteousness mm-hmm. that the man of God may be complete not may be completely but may be complete mm, okay. may be whole mm. equipped for every good works mm. and every good works here are the works of righteousness to be 
righteous to walk godly in this world you must engage in the word of god because the word of god will teach you will reprove you will correct you and it will train you in all righteousness okay the second thing about the word of god that i will say uh what should make us as christians want it more and more it is because it is desirable it is it desirable. is so sweet it is i mean I you know that's the, conflicting for somebody else might say but i don't see the desire of it Yes, girl, all around asema akisoma bible analala lakini akisoma novel manzi ya korada na kama yote yale. Mimi nimekuwa hapo. Mimi nimekuwa hapo and and even at times I get there. Mm-hmm. And I think we get there because I remember the f- when I started reading the bible I was there because I didn't really enjoy scripture. Uh I really didn't enjoy scripture because scripture didn't I, I wasn't taught that it is right. something I should enjoy. Ah, okay. I was taught it was something that you should do full stop. Mpanya is like uh, almost like just mandatory, mandatory not until you read Psalms 19. And then words like it is sweeter than even the droppings of a honeycomb. Mm-hmm. That is something sweet. It right. is desirable than even gold and silver. Right. So it, it should be very enticing to us because we are christians we have the holy spirit in us okay. and the holy spirit uses the word of god to feed and nourish our souls okay ni ice cream ni to the body ni pork to the body ni napenda pork you know like that sweet meal you want to have for your body all right the word of god is sweet to your okay. soul right. and you never get spiritually obese Mm. <laughs> that is the you boost. Never get <laughs> you get so spiritually better and stronger. Right. Okay. Mm. Quick one. I mean for you as an individual, how 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 have these two things played out then? How, I mean what are some profits for you as a dam? Yeah. Um and how how practical has the the statement desirable become for you? Oh, over yeah. time. There was a time I was I I started reading the Bible from Revelation to Matthew. That okay. was an interesting expedition. Mm-hmm. And I could, I can tell you, there were days I couldn't wait for my study time to come, because I really wanted mm-hmm. to do it. Okay. Like, I would read about three chapters a day, and then th- study a chapter, mm. pray, and th- it's something that I would do for two hours. Okay. And it was so sweet and so desirable. And I remember around that time, I memorized a lot of scriptures because I just wanted to be around the word of god right. uh how has it been profitable to me it has been profitable to me because through reading the bible i've seen some of the sins that i struggled with mm. going away okay just naturally for, uh, i remember i i would i struggled with pornography mm-hmm. for for a while mm-hmm. and and i started it is around the same time studying the scripture okay. that that sin just left mm-hmm. nowadays i don't to yeah. be honest god has really devil delivered me from that one right. um so so that is one of the okay. way i've seen it coming and also yeah. helping me in evangelism mm-hmm. in sharing the gospel ah okay uh, I go around sharing the gospel with yeah, people and yeah. I have the word of God there exactly. with me. I mean au ujipati mahali because yeah. there are those people who say mango unajua kuna mahali bible leo sema mm. see I can't I can't I can't say it right now I can't but even kuna open it. bible leo sema no. Yeah, I might not have the res- reference in my mind, but when I have my Bible, I open Robert it, I will find it. Get it. it. Yes. Yeah. Right. So okay. that has really been so helpful to All me. Right. I mean, that's that's interesting. I mean, uh, b- before you jump in uh, into something else here, I mean, uh, Matt, what 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 are what are some ways that you found um scripture um as uh, as desirable and profitable for you? When I was in university, um I, I really was determined to have a a, a girlfriend. I never had a girlfriend in secondary school and I went to university and I was I was determined nataka moja. And um I went on some dates with some girls but it just didn't, you know, it didn't pan out. So anyways, I remember I started going to a Bible study with some guys that were like uh, third and fourth year students. Mm-hmm. And we started now doing this Bible study together and I could just tell these guys really love Jesus. And I just thought I've never seen such passion for God in mm, people, you know, right. my age mates like that. Ah, okay. And I was a first year student, so I went in and I pulled the 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 Bible study leader to the side and I said, you know, tell me what's different about you guys. And he says, Matt, there's really nothing different about us, but we love the Lord and we strive to spend every day in the word of God. Right. He said, how are you doing with that? And I said, honestly, I'm 
I'm up and I'm down. I'm not the best with that. Right. He goes, go home and repent and ask the Lord to help you love him more. He said, one way that you can love him more is by spending time daily in the word. Okay. And so I go home and I started praying that prayer. And um, I just really started just really enjoying the word of God, mm. loving Jesus so much. I like, I like Saddam, I got excited about spending time in God's word and right. what was the Lord going to teach me today. Mm. And then going back now to that girlfriend thing, one day I just remember thinking, you know, my desire for, for Jesus and spending time in his word yeah. is much greater than even finding a girlfriend. Right. Mm. And so, okay. and I remember those, those are some things that changed in my life. Right. And these are not, and these are not cliche things. And because, mm. and, and for, for those of us who are, who are tuning in, these there's value. Scripture is God's word. And if it is God's word, then it means it has God's power, uh, God's power to transform and even to give us desire and to long for it. You know, it's, it's almost like acquired taste. You must get into it. Mm. Then you, you just start loving it because otherwise if you're not even into it in the first place yeah. I mean come on jai come on jai until you go there and experience it and that's the thing the, the, the Lord says taste and see see test taste, mm. taste, onja, taste and see that the Lord is good. And one of the ways to do that is to dig into scripture. Anyways, let's get into some, 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 uh, some meat of this conversation. Mm. Um, in passing, we, we should not also ignore that it is hard work reading the Bible. Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Something small about that. How, 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 how critical is that? It is not, it's not easy it's not impossible, but it's not easy as mm. well. Yes. Mm. This is the word of God. Yeah. <laughs> one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We are human. We are in the flesh. These words have the Holy have the, uh, its spirit in nature. Mm. Yeah. And it is not easy to read it if we just approach it as uh, flesh, yeah. as canon people. Mm. Okay. And so the best way of approaching the word of God is by the spirit of God. So we, when the, when we believe in Jesus Christ, we are sealed by the Holy Spirit. And one of the things we gain by having the Holy Spirit is we gain the mind of Christ. Okay. Uh, f- uh, First Corinthians chapter two, right. the last verse. Mm. This mind of Christ is the Spirit Himself, who searches even the deep things of God, and He will bring to us all that God wants us to know about Him as we read the Scripture. Okay. So it is hard work, yes, but we have a helper. Mm-hmm. The Holy Spirit helps us to read it and even to love it mm-hmm. when you're Mesema. Mm-hmm. So we will not downplay the fact that it is difficult. But at the same time, we are saying we have a helper who will help us to see God in every word mm. that is in the scripture. Interesting. I mean, and, and, and the conclusion, therefore, then is Bible reading is not for the lazy. Mm-mm. You cannot be lazy and be, and be a Bible Mm-mm. reader mm. and, and and love reading the Bible. I mean, um, there, there's a there's a group of guys I know uh, who do this uh, project. They call it a Bible reading. Uh, uh, it's a Bible reading program. Um, you know, mm. and 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 you uh, what is it called? B B R something. Anyway, Bible reading, consistent CBR, consistent Bible reading. Mm. You know, that's the first time I I read through the Bible myself. But it should be somewhere into like 2004 or something. Mm. And we did that training and it was quite intense, quite intense. And realized, hey man, this is, this is quite some work. Much work yeah. So, no, yeah, it's not for, for, for the for the lighthearted. Anyways, big question. How do we read the Bible? So I have it on my phone. I have it on my iPad. I have it on my tablet. I have it on my uh, PC. I have it uh, physical, real deal, like Bible paper, flip, flip, flip. So it is there. So how do I approach the whole reading of the Bible mm. thing? You know, how do I go about it? I think the first thing, find a Bible you can read. Find a Bible you can yeah, read. Yeah, don't get a French Bible. And you don't oh, know and French. you cannot even read French. <laughs> you know. Man, that reminds me, there's a time you go to this place, you can see a lady, you can see a lady in France, you can see a lady in Rwanda or something. <laughs> so me, I'm just saying this is like a, a Kenyan. So I'm going to find a Bible because I didn't have my physical Bible. Then I'm thinking, what is this? What is this? What is this? <laughs> yeah. Come and give French. Anyways, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So find a Bible mm-hmm. with, written in a, in a language you understand. Right. Uh, and then, me any translation. Okay. Maybe if you are beginning, mm-hmm. but I recommend uh, ESV. Okay. Uh, for two good reasons, it is written in the modern English, so mm-hmm. to to relate na araka. And number two, it its translation is philosophy is word for word. Okay. So you will get almost exactly what the the original manuscripts mm. were saying all right uh however the most common bible we have is uh, niv 
Uh, if you have that, read it. Mm. I mean, it is you read it. Yeah. Whichever Bible you you have, read it. Anza na iyo. Yeah. Um, but preferably, I, w- I would recommend ESV. All right. Two, mm-hmm. uh, find a good time every single day. Okay. To set time to read. All right. Uh, be deliberate with it because it is hard work. Yeah. So yeah. be deliberate with it. All right. Uh, this will help you to develop some discipline. Ukijua unamuka subui, sawa. Ukijua wenu mtuwa lunch, ukijua wenu msawa afternoon, whatever time. Okay. Find time every day. Okay. And I would really suggest it time is equal you think about it that day. Uh, deliberately plan, say, I will be reading at this time every day. Mm-hmm. So set a specific time every day for you to read. It will help you develop some discipline. Okay. Thirdly, journal. Eh, ikitu wa Kenya tupendi sana. <laughs> Andika. <laughs> Andika, I mean, uh. get a pen and a paper. Whatever you are reading, say John 3.16, for God so loved the Lord that gave his own begotten son, for God so loved the world. Who is the world? I'm the world, right? Uh, write down your devotion. And then even down there, you can even write your prayer down. Uh, this will help you to keep a track record of uh, how you are studying. And then you'll also see yourself moving and growing in your studies, becoming more detailed, becoming more deliberate okay. and all that. And even victory over sins and everything you will see. You realize at some point I was I was struggling to understand this area. Mm. Now I understand it. Blah, blah, blah. Mm. And it really, it is also something that might help people in the future. You don't do this, do this for that for that reason. Right. But we've seen many people historically who have kept records of their daily devotions mm. and it has come to help us today. Mm. One of the best examples for me is social chambers. Eugene and Akwangu Mokusai. Oh, social chambers. <laughs> My atmosphere for his... See, see, you say ours world. Chambers. So <laughs> 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 he would write his own personal devotions. And then upon his device, when his wife was going through his thing, she found she found it and then she published that as a book. And it is there. You can yeah. look around, you find it. And then kuna, the, the fourth thing you do, you try to ask yourself the WH questions. Right. Who, how, right. where, mm. when, what, you know. Mm. So so that when you're reading a passage, ask yeah. yourself who wrote it, mm-hmm. well, who was he addressing, right. where was he writing it mm-hmm. from, mm-hmm. you know, what was he saying, mm-hmm. and then uh, the big part of after understanding that you will all ask how does it now apply to my life how today apply to uh, when right. you're doing this now you're not just reading you are now studying the, the scripture yeah, you're yeah. trying to investigate the main point okay. that the writer is saying right and by that now you are getting to know the doctrine in that passage right and then now you apply that doctrine into your life mm. by asking how does it affect me mm. today okay mm. interesting now i mean uh for those of us who are tuning in um so far you definitely want to uh pause there check out www.kuzaapp.com and you'll find a lot of resources that um useful for your faith and for your growth in fact even as you're talking about how to read the bible you'll find a lot of devotions there written some blogs some podcasts and other conversations that are meaningful for uh your faith and your growth and they'll definitely push you back to scripture so then you're able to read and understand what's being said if you don't have the app you want to go to your phone right now and download it in your Android uh, or uh, iOS stores and download the Kuza app. Uh, you'll find it there. Very Missouri application and definitely share it with your friends. If you're not born again and you're listening to these conversations today uh, from where you're tuning in from, uh, you visit us on www.kuzaapp.com um, top right corner of the website is a uh, Receive Christ <laughs> button. Very interactive. Click on it. It will pop up a video and you can uh, listen to the presentation of the gospel. Should you get born again, uh, drop us a message and we'll be able to connect you to a Bible believing church near uh, where you live or as close as you can find. Uh, be that as it may, continue tagging along in this conversation because we are moving on to the next thing. So we have said number one, if I'm going to uh, appreciate reading my Bible, I must find a good translation and read it. I must find a good time. I must uh, learn how to journal and definitely ask the very important question, who, when, where, what, why, and how. What else do you need to capture in mind as we read uh, the Bible? 
Another thing is, um, <clears throat> is, is number five, I would say, is ask good, good questions. One good question would right. be, to, what does this teach me about God? Or mm. what does this teach me about Jesus or the Holy Spirit? Okay. And so one example you can do that with is like Luke chapter 12, verse 32. Mm. It says, fear not, little flock. For it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Mm -hmm. So as you read through that, we go back to our question, well, what does this teach me about God? Mm -hmm. So take it one step at a time. Fear not little flock. Mm -hmm. Well, if there is a flock, then there must be a shepherd. So therefore God is a shepherd. Mm -hmm. For it is your father's, God is a father, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Good pleasure to give you the kingdom. If there is a kingdom, there must be a king. Therefore, God is a king. Mm -hmm. You can even go back. If you're not little flock for your father's good pleasure, mm -hmm. right, to give you the kingdom. So we can say that God is a giver because mm -hmm. he likes to give the kingdom. Right. And also he finds pleasure. God has, is, a, is a happy God. He finds joy in this. So he finds pleasure in this. Mm -hmm. And then now if you know, there's five things I've just told us about God. God's a, a shepherd. He's a father. He's a, he, he has joy. He's a giver and he's a king. And then now we move forward into verse 33. It says, sell your possessions and give to the needy. Provide yourself with money bags that do not grow old with a treasure in mm. the heavens that does not fail where no thief approaches nor moth destroys. I am more likely to sell my possessions and give to the needy if I'm not overwhelmed by fear because I know that my shepherd is with me. My father is with me. Mm. He finds joy in giving me the kingdom. Mm. So therefore, right. knowing these things, and if I read the, the, you know, the scripture and ask myself, what does this teach me about God? It enriches my time in the word of God and helps mm. strengthen my, my thought and who he is. Mm. Another thing I would say is, Memorize the main point. Mm. And I would really encourage you to try to write it down in 15 words or less. As you read, like, let's say you're reading through, um, like, uh, one of the letters. Or for example, yeah. 1 Peter chapter 1, verses okay. 3 through 6. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm trying to think, what is the main point of this scripture? Okay. So it says this, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to his great mercy, he has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ mm -hmm. from the dead. Right. I'll stop right there. Now, I think I'm going there at the beginning. I'm seeing, obviously, this is saying, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, God. I bless you, right? Now, why? According to his great mercy, he has caused us to be born again. So why am I saying blessed be the God and Father? Because he's caused me to be born again. And this is all according to his great mercy. Then it goes forward and says to a living hope, to the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Then that word to an inheritance that is an imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, mm. kept in heaven. Mm. So those words there, to, mm. right, according to his great mercy, mm -hmm. to a living hope, mm -hmm. to an inheritance, mm -hmm. all of that is pointing back to God the Father, right. who has caused us to be born again. Mm. So what I would say is, if I was to write down what's the main point for First Peter 1, I just read verses 3 through 4, I write down, praise God, he has caused us to be born again. Mm -hmm. So okay. memorize that main point. Mm -hmm. Think, find that main point. Try to find where these, some of these conjunctions and stuff that we would call like mm -hmm. the words to and 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 therefore and so on and so forth. They're kind of pointing back okay. towards something. Right. So look at what the scripture is pointing to. Mm -hmm. Find what the main point is. So, I mean, is, there, is it just the main point or also the scripture itself? Because memorization, mm -hmm. I'm thinking you're, you're talking about, you know, if I'm looking at big I, I would even add in, yes, memorize. Mm -hmm the scripture itself right yeah memorize yeah. the scripture itself is, is really important too like you know Marvin we know in Psalm 119 verse 9 how can a young man keep his ways pure how by living according to your word. And then mm -hmm. it goes on and says, verse 11, your word have I hidden in my heart that mm -hmm. I may not sin against you. Right. So there's a real blessing, mm -hmm. right? And memorizing the scripture. Right. You know, for sure. We're, it's something I would really encourage all of us to do. I think I think one of the things that really helps in uh, in scripture memorization is that having somebody check you, check you on them. You know, like you get two or three people and you keep each other accountable. So then, yeah. uh, and, and you write them on those two small scripture memorization cards. These are things mm -hmm. that you were, were done to us when you were being discipled back in the year. Mm -hmm. And you write them in a card, 
and 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 you 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 write it word perfect and and you exchange your cards and uh, you have to say it word perfect word perfect just to make sure that it yeah. sticks to your head i think mm. there's just, even yeah there's even the bible memory app you know mm. that i that i would encourage you to do right. so I, i've i've got it down downloaded on my phone even mm. so i'd encourage you just to you know download an app right. there's other things you can do whatever method works for you mm. um, but like even my my son right now is five he just turned five years old i mean he memorizes two verses a month right now mm -hmm. mm. and so i mean he's a He's doing a really great, a yeah. really great job yeah, at doing yeah, these yeah. sorts of things. So we can all definitely do it. Mm. But another thing I would really encourage um, in terms of ways of how to read the Bible is to yeah. meditate upon the scripture. Meditate. Meditate. Like go somewhere, close your eyes and just sleep. You mean. <laughs> meditate doesn't mean nah. sleep. Meditate. <laughs> meditate is a way to think about it. You know, one of my one of my friends from the US, he talks about a cow. A cow has multiple stomachs, right? We know. The food, they eat the food and it goes into stomach one and they bring it up, back up. They chew it on again. Then it moves down to stomach two. Then they bring it back up. They chew it again and moves to stomach three. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And so we can see that they're bringing things back, thinking about it, bringing things back, thinking about it. Mm -hmm. And this is something that brings a real blessing in our lives when we meditate on the scriptures. Right. We see in Psalm one, um, it says from verse one, blessed is man who walks on the counsel of the wicked or stands in the way of sinners or sits in the seat of scoffers. But his delight is in the law of the Lord mm -hmm. and on his law, he meditates day and night Meditates. and then now the blessing we come here it says mm -hmm. he's like a tree planted by the streams of water that yields its fruit in its season and its leaves do not wither and all that he does he prospers there's a real blessing in meditating right. on the scriptures and thinking about it thinking about it so i think practically speaking let's say that you you memorize one portion of scripture um what i would say is you know you're in a matatu you bring that scripture back up to mind and you kind of take, you think about one word. Then you maybe think about two to three words. Then you think about three to four words and mm -hmm. you kind of take it, move progressively through it in your mind right. and think about it and ask God, give me grace to understand this more. Right. And mm -hmm. then the last thing I was saying on how yeah. to read the scripture, this is the most important. Mm -hmm. The most important is it doesn't really matter how much you hear the word, read it, study it, memorize, right. meditate upon it, if you do not apply it. If you do not apply it. If you don't apply it, niburetu. Right? It's right. it's it's like you need you need to make sure that the the goal of this is application, is worship, you know, and that's that sense. Right. So, you know, James 1, 23 through 25 says, For if anyone is a hearer of the word and is not a doer, he is like a man who looks intently at his natural face in the mirror. Mm. For he looks at himself and goes away and at once forget what he looks like. Mm. But the one who looks into the perfect law, the law of liberty, and perseveres, being no hearer who forgets, but a doer who acts, he will be blessed in his doings. So blessing comes through application. Right. And so I will say this, God is going to be more, um, he's going to be more, he's going to be ha more happier with someone who really knows one to two scriptures, but applies those as opposed to someone who has a PhD in theology mm -hmm. and doesn't no, apply them. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah, and that's, so and that's very, that, that's a very serious uh, reality, right? There. That's a very serious reality. And so I'll just encourage you no matter the goal with all of this is, is yes, we're encouraging you to read your Bible, but the, but the goal needs to be applying, right. being yeah. obedient to yeah. God's yeah. word. Yeah. And so those are some, I think, right. a couple of key ways. Of yeah, yeah, I mean, and Jesus, and, Jesus, and Jesus himself said it there. You know, he said, blessed are you when you know these things mm. and do them. You know, I think we can we, we cannot overemphasize the value of doing it. Um, our time is uh, almost gone. Thanks so much, Vic. Um, and thank you so much, Matt, just for bringing these truths. If you're tuning in, the question is, have you read your Bible lately? Have you interacted with it? Are you memorizing it? Do you know that this is the, 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 the place where the treasures of God's heart are? You know, it is the word that can transform you. You better do that. Get a friend or two or three uh, band together and start studying the Bible, reading the Bible through. Start even whatever six months program or reading through the New Testament or something. Just start somewhere because it is profitable. It is desirable. It is something that is going to help your soul. But also the Bible tells us that, you know, faith comes by hearing and hearing the word. We grow in our faith through the reading and interaction with the scripture. I know you love novels. I know you love movies, but love the word of God more because that is where transformation comes in. And as it has been said, it's all about doing it. Know it and do it. Don't just make so much noise about I know this, I know that, but let your life also make noise. Because
because you are doing what it is saying well mm. if you need to know more about reading your bible just open it on genesis and start reading and think that's going to be a good thing honestly mm. there are no seven steps of doing this thing you know are three ways of becoming better in bible reading no just open and start uh, reading or better still uh open the bible and read again right point number one two three and end they're all the same find it and read it well mm. thank you so much for tuning in from wherever you are i pray that the lord will bless you in the ministry of his word and i pray that your heart is going to be transformed once again gentlemen asanteni sana kwa kati wenyu tumeshukuru sana mungu akubariki ukiendelea kusoma neno kumbuka kupata application yetu kwa simu yako ya rununu kuza app itakusaidia sana kwa uhusiano wako na mungu ama ututembelee pale kwa www.kuzaapp.com na utapata mambo ambayo yatakusaidia rohoni yani mpaka baadaye tuonane tena